was young, I had a paper route, and I got up every morning to fold papers before I delivered them. Actually, really, really early in the morning, too. And one day, I discovered that scientists, I discovered, they discovered an extrasolar planet. And I read about it, because as I was folding, I could actually catch bits and pieces of what was going on. And this planet was far away, beyond our solar system, going around another star. And I knew that this was huge news. I knew that people before us, for 1,000 years, 10,000 years, 100,000 years, no one had ever made a discovery like this before. So I was living in the future. I was 11, so I also thought we were going to make contact with aliens, like, next year. But it was a hot Jupiter, and there's little potential for life on those. So if we fast forward to today, 20 years into the future, we know of over 1,800 extrasolar planets, and we know of thousands more that are candidates just waiting to be confirmed. And that kind of rising rate of discovery is really, really common in astronomy and the sciences in general. If we go back 100 years, scientists didn't know about other galaxies beyond the Milky Way. It was just the Milky Way. And today, we know that there are hundreds of billions of galaxies out there. We also didn't know about black holes 100 years ago or quasars. We didn't know about extrasolar planets or pulsars or magnetars. We hadn't discovered Pluto or the Plutoids or the Kuiper Belt. We hadn't even discovered most of the solar system's moons that we know of today. The world is a very different place today. If you look at this picture over here, this is the Hubble Ultra Deep Field. It's a pretty popular image. And in it, there are thousands of galaxies. Right? Each of these points of light, these tiny little points of light, those aren't stars, those are galaxies. So if we're getting these images back from probes like this, the Hubble Space Telescope, and there's millions of images, how can scientists go through all of that data? The short answer is they can't. For that, we need a citizen science revolution. So citizen science is very simply non-professional researchers conducting research. And citizen science goes beyond astronomy. It has to do with pretty much every scientific field. In 2011, for example, there was a game called Fold It. And the Fold It game allowed people to model proteins. So researchers tried for 15 years to solve the mason Pfizer monkey virus by folding a protein. And after 15 years, they couldn't do it. And they released the problem to the public. And over 236,000 people, regular people, most of these people did not have advanced degrees. They didn't have degrees in biochemistry. Got on board, and they tried to solve this problem by modeling a protein. So how long did it take 236,000 people to solve this problem, bearing in mind that researchers couldn't do it in 15 years? It took them three weeks. And this, of course, brings me to Douglas Adams, who famously said in his Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy that the world is a giant computer, and all of the organic life makes up its operational matrix. That's fanciful, and it's fun, and it's quirky. But in reality, there are billions of us, right? Billions of humans, and all of us, almost every single one of us, is not only good at pattern recognition, we can't turn it off. In fact, it gets us into trouble sometimes. We're always seeking patterns. We're always trying to recognize patterns in data. And computers are very bad at doing this. And so we need everyone on board to solve all of the information coming back to us. So we use technology and machines, sometimes machines in outer space, to send back huge amounts of data. And then if all of us, all six billion of us, get on board with analyzing that data, think of how much faster we could solve problems and go through the universe. So how can you get involved? Well, there are hundreds of citizen science projects out there. There's everything from tracking bumblebees to helping radio astronomers just by donating your idle computer time. One of my favorites is the Heart Project. The Heart Project asks for anyone who stumbles upon research about animals and their heartbeats to send that research in so that they can create a database of animals and how many heartbeats they get per lifetime. You can see up here, humans 
doing pretty good on the lifetime. And we also get about a billion beats per lifetime. Another really great one is the Genographic Project. The Genographic Project, DNA scientists send you a kit, and you swab your mouth and you send back your DNA, and they analyze it and they tell you, and that tells them where humans migrated from, ultimately where we came from. But also they get back to you and tell you what your genetic makeup is. They'll even tell you how much Neanderthal is sitting in your DNA. So if the task of finding certain citizen science projects to get on board with, if that sounds like it might take a lot of searching Google, well, you should know that there are some really great websites out there that have pretty much put all of those projects in one place. A really great one is Space Hack. Pretty much all of the citizen science projects that have to do with space exploration are on Space Hack. Another great one is SciStarter. These are scientific research projects. And the nice thing about SciStarter is there are so many projects, but they are filterable. One of the filters is projects that are really good for children. Another one is Zooniverse. And I love Zooniverse. It's probably my favorite because it's kind of the mother of them all. It's the one that really got famous and popular and started this whole citizen science revolution. And there are over 25 citizen science projects that you can participate in. And every single one of them allows you to do real research for real scientists and come to real discoveries. So, there's so many options out there for you. And at this point, if you're thinking, but I'm not that good at science, and I didn't do well in math in high school, I, I, don't, I want to get involved, but science is not something I really love. Well, I would never say don't get more education in science. Formal education is, is wonderful, and I, and I have to say that that's not a good thing. It's a wonderful thing. But even if you're not interested in getting more of a formal education in science, these citizen science projects are set up for everyone to be able to help and do. And the other thing is that a lot of amateurs out there have made huge discoveries. A lot of scientists didn't have a lot of formal training. One of my favorite examples of this is Clyde Tombaugh. Clyde Tombaugh discovered Pluto. And when he discovered Pluto, he was a farmer. He was just a dedicated amateur astronomer. He later went on to get degrees in astronomy, but at the time of his greatest discovery, he was just a dedicated amateur astronomer. Astronomy needs amateur astronomers, and science needs citizen scientists. In short, we're all in this together. We need everyone. We need you.